Todd here again. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Bitcoin's current market cap and how I think about its potential future market cap. Uh, this is a little bit of a um, a little bit of a complicated topic, so don't don't get too worried about if you if you fully understand it or not. But I, I want to for anybody that may be um, purchasing Bitcoin or thinking about purchasing Bitcoin, I think it's or any investment, I think it's important to understand um, and build your own uh, kind of th uh, theory on where you think your investment's going and and the rationale of of how it's going to increase in value. Um, as with all these videos, um, this is not financial advice. I'm not a, uh, a certified financial planner, so do your own research um, and make your own investment decisions that are appropriate for your situation. Um, so let's get started. Let's get started first uh, with kind of what is market cap and how it's calculated. And uh, for Bitcoin, it's, it's very easy because there's a fixed maximum supply of 21 million. And so... Um, all we need to do is multiply the uh, the number of coins in circulation. So we take 21 million by its current price, um, and and that's how you get the market cap. So today we take you know uh, 40. Uh, oh, let's pull it up real quick. We've got. Let's get rid of this ad. is trading at 42,400. Times 21 million. We have about $890 billion market cap um, based on today's price. So again, don't get too worried about, don't get too caught up in that right now. Um, the price fluctuates a little bit right now, but just, just understand we're slightly below $1 trillion market cap for Bitcoin today. Um, and uh, I've put together this very, very simplified spreadsheet of how I think about um, its current market cap and how I think about Bitcoin's potential market cap. Um, and I have two tables here, which we'll, we'll walk through pretty quickly. Uh, one is for current 2021, 2022, um, and then one is thinking, you know, five to 10 years out, more like 2030, um, and, and how I think we can uh, see some significant price appreciation, price, a price appreciation um, of, the, of Bitcoin per coin. And so in this table, what I've done is uh, one of the ways I think about um, Bitcoin's potential market cap is what could Bitcoin be used for? What is Bitcoin currently used for today? And what is Bitcoin potentially going to be used for in the future? And there's a lot of different use cases for it. I've pulled what I think are the three biggest, which is, which is gold, kind of a, a reserve asset. Um, so that's here. Uh, I've picked up global remittance. So this is um, cross-border movement of money think western union think um you know international uh how how are people sending money back to their uh, country of origin or their family members in other parts of the world there really is not a good solution for this um w w frankly western union is is one of the largest if not the largest method for doing that um Maybe in a different video, I'll talk about kind of Bitcoin versus Western Union, but it's a very cumbersome solution. It's a very expensive solution, especially for people across the world that are unbanked or not easy, don't have. I mean, we we are accustomed in the United States of driving five minutes down the road and going to your lo local bank. That is not the case in in significant portions of the world. Um, and so having a digitally native electronic solution where people can make cross-border payments across the world to people's electron you know phones computers etc has great potential i think this is actually a a, a a hugely huge area of potential for bitcoin moving forward uh, but that's what global remittance is and then consumer transactions and the way i think about this this is not fully complete and it's maybe not the perfect metric but i think about the total volume of just just Visa and MasterCard, never mind, 
you know, cash payments, never mind um, Amex and Discover and, and some of these other credit credit companies, but just Amex or excuse me, just Visa and MasterCard, what is their total annual volume um, per year? And so the way I break down this table is so gold currently has a $13 trillion market cap. Global remittance is estimated at about $700 billion per year. And consumer transactions for Visa and MasterCard are about $7.2 trillion, which is staggering, but um, that's pretty outrageous. Uh, but that's what it, that's what it's estimated, or that's what they've reported it is as of 2021. And then what I do is I say, okay, well, what do I think Bitcoin's potential share of that market cap is today? And so... For, I think the biggest use case for it is as a reserve currency or, or a store of value very similar to gold. And we've talked about this in other videos where I think gold is a very, I mean, gold has a very um, rich history. It's a very tangible asset. It's a very hard asset that we, that we talked about. Um, but as we see a, you know, an aging population globally of digital first or or generations of people that really only understand or um, or fully understand electronic and digital assets and digital um, experiences, I think that we're going to see the adoption of Bitcoin versus gold increase tremendously. Um, so I have it pegged currently at about ten percent of the per, of the potential um, gold market cap. You could argue that's higher or lower. Um, but for this exercise, I have it. I have it at kind of ten percent of the of the of the globe of the global gold market cap. For global remittance, I have it at just one percent. So I'm assuming just one percent of global remittance today is being done via Bitcoin or or um, uh, or or uh, services built on top of Bitcoin, um, and that's a total of seven billion dollars. And I'm assuming that zero. Uh, consumer transactions are being done via Bitcoin as compared to the $7.2 trillion um, credit card transactions. We know that, that it's, it's happening a little bit in, uh, in countries like El Salvador. We're seeing some, some, um, some potential adoption in some other countries, but I, don't, I think right now it's so negligible as, a, as an actual uh, currency that I have it pegged at zero. As you'll see below, I think that this this will grow as, as sovereign countries adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. Um, I think, unfortunately, as we see um, hyperinflation or uh, devaluation of, of some of today's world leading currencies start to come under pressure, I think you will see this potentially change over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. But right now, I think it's, it's zero. And so if we add up all this potential, Right, these three areas of potential, we're at one point, roughly one point three um, trillion dollars. If we divide that by the the current max, or excuse me, the maximum number of bitcoins in circulation, and again, these twenty one million don't exist today. But to be conservative, I'm saying, what's the maximum number? And that's twenty one million. Um, there are coins that have been lost. There are certain coins that haven't been created yet. But this is the this is the maximum. This is like the the highest number there will ever be. And if we divide those out, we get $62,238 per Bitcoin. And you just saw in the beginning of this video, we're trading just over 40,000. So based on my current, my current math, um, and again, this is just three use cases of, um, of uh, or, 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 th or three potential uh, uh, use cases for Bitcoin. Um, I've got it pegged about $62,000 per coin. So I think we're undervalued by, uh, quite a large amount, which is why I feel very, very comfortable personally buying Bitcoin in the $30,000, $40,000 range, um, frankly, hand over fist, because I, I think it's very undervalued at these prices. So then we think about, um, you know, where are, these, where are these three potential use cases going? And so um, let's assume, you know, 2030, let's assume gold market cap kind of stays the same. It's, again, it's the, the, the or the uh, um, one of the benefits of gold is it's relatively stable, um, doesn't see a lot of volatility. And so let's just assume that market cap stays about the same. Global remittance, uh, the same the same report that published the $700 trillion 
um, or excuse me, $700 billion uh, uh, global remittance market for 2021 has estimated that will be $1.2 trillion um, by 2030. Let me just fix this graph. Actually, I'm sorry. They estimated $1.2 trillion at 2025. But again, so this could be much larger by 2030. But for this math, again, let's just round things down. Let's be very conservative. This number could be much larger by 2030. Um, but we'll use 1.2 trillion. And then consumer transactions, um, I've estimated will grow to about $9 trillion. Again, just Visa and MasterCard. Um, this number could be much, much higher than that. Maybe it's not higher, but again, I've kind of reflected it here, like a 25-ish percent growth over the next eight to nine years. Um, then we go over to the Bitcoin potential column, and I've increased... Um, Bitcoin's potential for gold to 20%. So from 10 to 20% of the total gold market cap. I personally think that could be much higher, but again, trying to be relatively conservative. Um, so 20% of the $13 trillion gold market cap would be 2.6 trillion. Global remittance, um, I've moved from 1% to 10%. I think we will see a significant increase in adoption of Bitcoin for global remittance. Again, I could totally be wrong, but this is this is kind of how I think about it. Um, and that would reflect a $120 billion potential opportunity. And then by 2030, I've reflected Bitcoin having 1% of consumer transactions, Visa, MasterCard. Um, so of the $9 trillion, 1% would be $90 billion. So for again, adding up these three use cases, let me fix that, would represent about a 2.8 to 3 million or trillion dollar potential market cap. Divide it out by 21 million coins, and you're at 133,810 per coin, which is about twice what it is now. Now, again, I think that there are other use cases here that could be um, could be much higher. I think when we think about uh, cash reserves, that's not represented here at all. Um, me personally, I, 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 I don't maintain a lot of cash in, in the banks. I, I use, uh, I, we actually store it in Bitcoin. Um, and so that wouldn't be reflected here. I think there um, there's other opportunities as there are um, investment vehicles such as uh, uh, Bitcoin trusts and Bitcoin ETFs that will become that we're starting to see a lot of momentum on. I think you'll see a, a large influx of opportunity uh, in, in investment vehicles and institutional buying. Again, really not represented here. Uh, represented here a little bit in gold. I mean, uh, countries hold gold on their treasuries. Institutions hold some gold in their treasuries, uh, but really we're not we're not seeing. You know, I haven't captured here anything as far as institutional investment buying um, and or retail retirement accounts as well. So I think those are two, two potential buckets that could drive value um, as well. So just wanted to quickly explain kind of how to calculate Bitcoin's market cap, how I think about it in, in, um, as far as its potential growth, how I think about a couple of drivers um, as to how that uh, can potentially drive the value of Bitcoin up over time. Again, do your own research. Uh, think about other use cases that Bitcoin could be used for, and you can pl you can add rows here and just say, okay, you know, if if you come up with another use case, do a little bit of research to understand what that's potent what that current market cap is today. Think about what you think Bitcoin's potential could be within that market cap um, as far as market share goes. And you can try, you can start to relatively easily um, come up with your own thoughts and hypotheses on the price of Bitcoin um, per coin uh, out into the future. So uh, let me know if you have questions, leave a comment below um, and happy to talk about this anytime. Just let me know. All right. Bye.